Today I'm going to give you five limiting beliefs that can actually help you in your life. So stay with me. So of course, in other videos, I've talked about how the work we can do to remove our limiting beliefs. Some of the core beliefs even that are there that determine the course of our lives, our emotional well-being, our behaviors and everything else. So they're essentially important. But this is a kind of a, a weird video, but it's also true that you can have limiting beliefs that can be helpful. And really what I'm talking about here is that these beliefs instill a kind of humility within us that can be very, very helpful to become humble with these beliefs when we, when we carry them. So it can feel like a bit of a knock or it can feel like these beliefs are telling you you can't do something, but you can make up your mind as to whether or not these are going to be helpful or not. But I think a lot of us do carry the opposite to these beliefs. So let's jump into the first one here to, to see what we mean by limiting beliefs that can be helpful. And the first one, the first limiting belief I think that can be helpful is the belief that you cannot predict the future. So much of our problems in life come from this assumption that doesn't go question that I can predict the future, especially if we have any type of anxiety, because anxiety is always future oriented. It's focus, depression more so on the past and bringing the past into our life. But anxiety is all about some catastrophe that we see in the horizon that when we have anxiety, you know, it, it typically comes out of what if that thing happens? I hope that thing doesn't happen. But that's only because the anxiety comes out through the rational mind and we say, I hope that doesn't happen or what if that happens? Really what the nervous system is saying is that's going to happen. So if we realize that we cannot predict the future, start to say things like, well, what if that doesn't happen? That thing may not happen at all. I can't predict the future at all. And to start to see safety more in the present than in the future, because typically there's not much for us in the future. Most of our thinking, which is future oriented, is destructive and unhelpful for us. So to realize I cannot actually predict the future at all and see what happens when we start to carry this belief to our anxiety. Our anxiety is going to go way down if we can instill this belief. Another aspect of this belief is I can't predict the future. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next month in my job review or the interview. But also nobody else can predict the future either. And this is really important, I think, for things like, you know, especially people you respect or even gurus you might watch online or anybody, including someone like me, a therapist. Nobody can predict the future. So if anyone tells you this is going to happen, so watch out for that, to be a little bit skeptical of that too. Um, I've heard many people talk to uh, experts and consultants and coaches and therapists and everything else. And the therapist says, you know, if you continue on this track, this is going to happen. And quite often it doesn't. <laughs> so we, we start to question our own belief that we can predict the future, but question everybody's belief. It doesn't matter who they are. Nobody can predict the future. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. They certainly don't know what's going to happen a week from now or a year from now. So that's the first limiting belief. It's a very healthy one, which again, brings a little humility, but it's very, very healthy for us, especially if we have anxiety. So the second one we're going to look at here, the second limiting belief that can actually help us in our life is you cannot read other people's minds. I don't know how much emotional suffering comes from attempting or thinking we can read other people's minds. I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's pretty out there, right? The idea that we can, we know what's going on in the internal landscape of another person. You know, that person, that person hates me. That person dislikes me. That person is jealous of me. That person looks down on me. 
imagine if we could actually go into their heads. I think probably 99.99% of the time we would be way off in terms of what the person is thinking and feeling. So definitely in terms of the relationships we have in life, it's just a bit of humility with, I do not know what that person is thinking right now. And I can't know. Now the closest we can know is to have an open conversation and express how we feel. But really, we can't read another person's mind. So and it's attempt, and especially in relationships, I mean, even in intimate relationships, it's this idea that I already know what that person wants. So I'm going to now give them what I think they want. Well, I'm really mind reading. I need to like go and try and find out what that person wants maybe before I try and give them what they want. Or, you know, not to have the other person try to mind read you to be more expressive and open about what your needs. So that can be a very, very helpful thing to bring in this idea that I cannot read other people's minds. The third one, the third belief, limiting belief that can actually help us in our life. Again, it's a bit of a blow to our ego, but it's a, and it brings humility with it. But it is the belief that you or I, we are no better than any other person. You're no better than anybody else. So hopefully you're not reeling too much from that one. But this is very important because it's a kind of a two-edged sword, this one. It's actually good news in this regard. I'm not trying to knock your confidence with this, right? But the mind that looks out into the world and it finds people and it categorizes them into good enough, not good enough, this per well, I'm better than this person over here. The mind that puts a person below you, right, below itself, will inevitably, and it has to do this, turn the tables where now you feel inferior to another person. So if you find yourself feeling inferior a lot, start to question where you, to, to look at the thoughts that may be putting other people down or seeing them as less than, or less important, or less successful, or less worthy, or less, you know, whatever it is, less important. Any, a mind that puts someone down is going to put somebody up. It has to happen. And invariably, we will feel inferiority if this is what's happening to us. So what we're trying to instill here is, is uh, to look beyond appearances, because the appearances are very de deceptive in this, right? It's very easy to fall into this trap when we're focused on the externalities of a, of a person. To assume then that their value is, well, it can be categorized and we have the capacity, we have the, we have the, um, the wisdom to make those calls. We really don't. And um, to sit with this idea that I'm no better than anybody else, it's actually one of the best things you can do for your own self-esteem, believe it or not comes with humility, but it's a healthy, healthy belief for us to be carrying around. So that's number three. Now the fourth one here is very important. Now it's not something people typically consciously tell themselves, but I do think that a lot of us carry this belief unconsciously. And it is the belief, the limiting belief here is that you are not a superhero. I find it very interesting, you know, in the last few years that superhero movies have become so, so successful and popular with people. And I think it's because a part of us would like to see ourselves as a, a superhero. Truth is we're not superheroes. And it's in accepting that there's a maturity that comes with accepting that I'm not a superhero. Okay, I ha I'm a human being. And I like that about myself. I like the fact that I have an awful lot of potential, an awful lot of power, an awful lot of strength, um, an awful lot of creativity and ingenuity and energy. But I also have a need for space, a need for boundaries, a need to rest. I can also be very, very vulnerable. I also need support in my life. So a lot of us, I think, are trying to unconsciously be a superhero of some kind. We're trying to, to work harder than we've ever worked before. We're trying to hustle. We're trying to really never fail at anything, never be vulnerable, never get hurt in, with anything. It can also lead to kind of a stoicism or a kind of a, an indifference to kind of open up to 
to really what we want because we're kind of afraid of being hurt by it. But we think we can be this superhero. But you know what? We're not superheroes. Doesn't mean we're not powerful and very impressive and, and worthy of admiration. Of course we are. But to accept our, our humanity is a very, it's a very uh, important step in maturity to accept that we have, you know, the need to be interdependent with other people, for instance. So that's really important. And the last one, if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, you may not be surprised to hear this one. But the last of these sort of limiting beliefs that can be helpful to us, I think, is the belief, it can sound like a limiting belief, but it's the belief that you don't need to improve. Again, we're, we're kind of bombarded all the time with these things about self-improvement, okay? And it's a great thing that I should be improving myself all the time. What I'm really advocating for here is I don't need to improve. It's almost to get rid of this idea of improving myself. Now, I'll give you an alternative to that. But to improve something has become sort of synonymous with fixing something that's defective. So what I prefer to do is to, to look at... Uh, uh, an attitude of self-celebration for where I am right now with an openness to growth. But the foundation has to be who I am right now is already valid. It's already worthy of celebration. So you don't need to improve. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a, a limiting belief maybe that I think, okay, I think there's some humility that can come in from that because again, it's that superhero thing of, chasing a perfection that I will someday get to where I never feel vulnerable, by the way. But what if I don't need to improve? What if I need to work on really validating myself a little more? I think that's the one thing, in fact, that's really missing for most of us is we forget to stop and validate ourselves a little before we can feel sort of fortified enough from that validation to then step into self-expression, self um, self self expression and creativity and to live from an authentic personality that we have. So again, just to recap, the first one here of these limiting beliefs that can be helpful is you cannot predict the future. You can't read people's minds. You're not better than anybody else out there. You're not a superhero and you don't need to improve. So let me know what you think of these guys. I hope that was a useful video. And um, thanks as always for joining me here and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.